Bible college has just led me further into that. I found my purpose in what God has called me to do. Here at Karis Bible College, I'm learning by doing. I am doing ministry. I'm in God's will for my life right now. I have no doubt that God will continue to lead me in my calling. With what I'm learning here at Karis, I know I'll be ready. You know, praise God that it was this ministry the Lord used to touch Isaac and to give him this revelation so that now he's living an abundant life. And you know what? This ministry is preaching these truths and we're seeing people's lives change by the tens of thousands. But we have more people wanting to come and participate in our Karis Bible College than what we can accommodate. And so we are in the process of building out our campus and it's going to cost hundreds of millions of dollars to complete this. And I just can't charge enough tuition for the students in order to do that. So I'm asking you, if you've been blessed, if you see that these truths are the answer to the problems that we have individually, but also collectively as a nation, I'm asking you to help us raise up people to send them into the harvest and become a part of this. You can go to awmi.net slash campus, and we have an artist rendering of what the campus is gonna look like, some information, even things about how you can sponsor a half of one dorm room or a whole dorm room or an entire dorm. We've got all of that listed there at awmi.net slash campus. So go check it out, pray about it, and if the Lord leads you, join with us and become a foundation builder today. Welcome to the Canadian edition of The Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. The teachings that you have invested in me has produced healing and relationship with God in my life. So I'm just eternally grateful to you and to your ministry. And now here's Andrew. Welcome to our Thursday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today I'm nearing the end of my second week teaching on the old man is dead. I tell you, this has been powerful. And most people don't understand this. You know, my staff shared with me that I have taught on this before and we had product, I wasn't aware of that, but this product is going into more detail. Like for instance, today I'll be getting into Romans chapter seven, and I know I didn't cover that when I taught on this before I taught an abbreviated deal. So we've got this new book entitled The Old Man is Dead. It's a 55 page uh, introduction to the subject, and this is a gift to you. And then we have CDs, DVDs, and this is a USB that has the audio and video on there. And this goes into a lot more detail. I think there's four CDs or DVDs in that set. So I encourage you to please get that and we'll be giving out that information at the end of the program today. I've already covered all of Romans chapter six in the last, uh, what would that be, eight programs. And uh, man, I've covered a lot of material. I can't go back through all of this, but let me just say that I've been talking primarily that when a person gets born again, their old sinful nature that compelled them to sin, that held them as a slave to sin. So they might improve sometimes, but ultimately they would always fall back into stuff because it was their nature to sin. That's the way that all of us were born with a sinful nature on the inside of us. But when you get born again, that sinful nature is taken away, or what the Bible calls the old man is dead. And it doesn't resurrect, and it doesn't come back, and you don't have to die to your old man over and over and over the way some people teach. You died unto sin once, just like Jesus did, and now you reckon yourself to be dead. You just appropriate what was already done instead of trying to somehow or another keep this identity that you are by nature a sinner. I was by nature a sinner, but I got changed and I am now a brand new person. And when I begin to change that identity and realize who I am in Christ, it sets me free from the dominion of sin. As it says in Romans chapter uh, six, verse 14, for sin shall not have dominion over you for you are not under the law, but under grace. Once you understand that the old man is gone and there is nothing forcing you to live in defeat, failure, sin anymore, then it sets you free not to go live in sin, but it'll set you free to resist sin and to overcome all of those kind of things. And anyway, that's what the sixth chapter was all about. 
Here in Romans chapter 7, it now begins to use an illustration uh, talking about your old man being dead, and it compares it to marriage, some of the things that the Word of God teaches about marriage. So in Romans chapter 7, verse 1, it says, Know ye not, brethren. Today we would say, Don't you know this? This is so simple. Seems like everybody ought to know this. It says, Know ye not, brethren? For I speak to them that know the law, how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. For the woman which hath a husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. So then, if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is freed from the law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. Man, there is a lot in these verses, but it's comparing our death to the old man to a woman who was married to a man who was a tyrant, who was an ungodly person, but she couldn't escape because she was bound by the law to that marriage. If she would have left and gone out and married somebody else, it would have been considered adultery. So there was no way to escape from that marriage except through the death of the old man. Now, this loses some of its comparison today because we have lowered the standards so much that today people just divorce and remarriage for any reason. There's a lot of people that don't even see uh, the necess necessity for getting married. They just shack up with the person and think that that's sufficient. But back in the day that this was written and under God's standard, it is absolute adultery. It is fornication if you have sex with a person outside of marriage. And once you're in marriage, you can't just divorce that person for any reason. You know, in our culture today in the United States, they have what they call no-fault divorce, where just for any reason, you can just choose to get a divorce and they'll honor it. That's not the way that the Word of God teaches. Anyway, I'm not going to teach on marriage, but originally, the way that this is written, this is talking about that when a person was married, that you could not go and have a relationship with another person without being uh, an adulterer. You were bound by the law to that mate. And the only way to escape that was through death. You know, the Lord said that um, when people die and go to heaven, they don't marry nor are given in marriage. And so marriage is something that applies only to this life. And if your mate were to die, well, then you are totally loosed from the law and you aren't bound to that mate anymore. You're free to go and remarry. And so most people understand that. What it's doing is comparing this to our relationship to the law. And again, I could spend a week or two trying to verify this. You could go to our website or you could call into our phone center and they could point you towards some of this other teaching. But the law wasn't given to set you free. It was given to amplify the sin. Matter of fact, it's going to say that right here in Romans chapter 7. Let me just jump ahead for a second. And it says in verse 12, uh, Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy and just and good. Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid, but sin, that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good. That sin by the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. This is the purpose of the law. It was to amplify sin and to make sin look so bad that we would run from it that we would turn from it and we would turn to God and call out for mercy. The law never set anybody free. All it did was show you what a uh, sinner you were. It amplified sin. Did you know if you did 99 things out of 100 right, the law would never give you a compliment on how much good you did. It would only focus on the one thing you did wrong and make it so big that you would fail. Regardless, That was the purpose of the law, was to take sin and magnify it, amplify it, so that you would despair of your self-righteousness and you would ask God for mercy instead of justice. That was the purpose of the law. And so the law came along, and the law is what bound us to that old sinful nature. 
the law, here, here, let me say it another way. If you could imagine that a bull was laying in a pasture and this bull was feeling bad about, you know, the fact that any person that walks across this pasture, I, I'm mean, I charge them. I'm just a mean, angry bull. So this bull recognizes that it needs to change. And so this bull just says, from now on, I'm not a bull anymore, I'm a sheep. So it's laying there, chewing its cud, and trying to convince itself it's a sheep. Did you know that you can't just change because you change the way you think and you now say, I'm not an adulterer anymore, I'm not a liar anymore, I'm not a thief anymore or a drunk or whatever. It's not just mind over matter. You've got to be born again to change. This bull couldn't just think it's a sheep. It has to be born a sheep to be a sheep. So this bull, if it was laying there trying to change its actions by thinking, I'm not a bull anymore, I'm a sheep, it's in deception. And you know what? It's to that bull's advantage that it just recognizes that, hey, I, I got to be born again. I can't change. And so how do you bring this bull out of its deception? You just wave a red flag in front of it. And did you know the red flag doesn't make the bull have a bull nature? It just draws out that nature that was already there. And that bull will wind up charging and realizing, whoops, I, I thought I was changed, but I'm not. And I, I need to be born again. I need to be born a sheep if I want to be a sheep. You know, I hope you understand the illustration. The illustration is that for us, we thought that we were wrong. We knew that we had done wrong. And so we think, you know, from now on, I'm just a different person and everything's going to be fine. But unless you get born again, born from above, as Jesus said in John chapter 3, you can't just change your nature. We were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 3. It was our nature. We were born in sin. I used these verses two weeks ago in Romans chapter 5 that by one man we became sinners. Through one man we had judgment come upon us. Through one man we had condemnation come upon us. It's not just our individual sins. We were born with a sin nature and we had this evil, sinful, carnal nature on the inside of us and we've got to be changed. So how did God bring us out of our deception? Because, you know, it says over in 2 Corinthians, but they comparing themselves among themselves and measuring themselves by themselves are not wise. And this is what people do constantly. They look around and they see people that are living worse than them and they say, thank you that I'm not like this publican over there. I fast twice in the week. I pay tithes of mint and anise and cumin. See, that's what the Pharisee did, and he was comparing himself with the publican and thinking, I'm better than this. I live holier than this, and so God's got to accept me. But Jesus went on to say that it was the publican who repented and just asked for mercy who was accepted by God, not the religious person who was living a holy life. And the problem was that he was trusting in his holiness. How do you bring people out of the deception? that they're comparing themselves and thinking I'm better and so God's going to accept me based on my own goodness. You know how God did it? He gave the law. And the law said, Thou shalt not. And the law made sin come alive. Man, I, I'm not going to be able to get to it today, but sometime during this series, I'll get to that down here in Romans chapter 7, that sin took occasion by the commandment and slew me that I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. And the commandment which was ordained unto life, I found to be unto death. The law didn't set us free from sin. It took the sin that we had, that sin nature, and amplified it to show us how ungodly we were <clears throat> so that we would quit trusting in ourselves and we would just throw ourselves on the mercy of God and receive salvation as a gift not a wage to be earned. And so the law took our, our sinful nature. Now that's the comparison right here when it's talking about marriage. That old man, the husband, was the old man here. And he was a tyrant. And he was, he was totally rebellious towards God. And we were married to that nature and we couldn't get out of it. And the law strengthened that union so that there was no escape. The only way to get out of that marriage, this uh, commitment, this bondage to the old man was through death. And that's exactly what Romans chapter 6 was all about. 
that our old man is dead. We are now dead to the law. So Romans chapter 7 is saying in the same way that a woman couldn't get out of a marriage unless the man died, you couldn't get out of this relationship, this bondage to the old man without the death of the old man. So these very verses right here, see, are confirming that the old man is dead, not just dead until the next morning and then he resurrects and you got to go through this again. No, he is dead, gone, non-existent. God took that sinful nature out of us. You are not by nature part devil now that you've been born again. You have a new nature on the inside of you, and the only thing that is compelling you to still live in sin is that you don't know what's happened to you. You don't understand. You haven't reprogrammed your mind. Your mind was programmed wrong by the old man. Now it's got to be reprogrammed by the new man that's on the inside. And in the same way that if a woman would have gone out and have had a physical relationship with somebody besides her husband, that would be called adultery. Did you know if you don't have a death to that old sin nature and you believe that you received a new nature from God, but you've also got the old sin nature on the inside of you, if you believe that you're schizophrenic and so you've got this new born again self, but then you've also got the old self, well then in a sense you're living in adultery. And this same terminology is used when he's talking about you are adulterers and adulteresses, not talking about physically, but spiritually. When we get born again, our old man has to die and be gone before we can receive the new spirit that God places on the inside of us, this new nature. If you believe you've got two natures, well, then you're living in spiritual adultery. That's what these verses are saying. So in a sense, you could look at it this way. Our soul, that's our mental and emotional part, and our body, this is the portion that the Bible calls flesh, and it's going to use that terminology a lot right here in uh, Romans chapter 7 and Romans chapter 8. So the part of us called flesh, your body and your mental emotional part, that's like the woman. And it was married to this sinful nature that we were born with and you couldn't get free from it. That old sin nature controlled us and caused us to live in sin. It wasn't our actions of sin that made us had a sinful nature. No, it was the sinful nature that caused us to go live in sin. We were bound to it by the law. But when Jesus came and when we received salvation and put our faith in what Jesus did for us, that old man is dead. It is taken out of the way. You don't have an old man anymore. It had to be taken out of the way before the new nature, the spirit of Jesus, came on the inside of you. Otherwise, you would have had two husbands. You would have been living in spiritual adultery. No, the old man is gone, and you are a brand new person on the inside. Man, that's awesome. You know, right now, I can just... I, I know by the Spirit of God that there's people all over the world that are finally seeing this. And if you can see this and understand it and embrace it and recognize it on the inside of you, there aren't two different dogs that are fighting against each other. You only have one nature. That old sinful nature is gone, and now you have a new you a righteous you, a nature that is identical to God. It's God's nature that was placed on the inside of you. If you could see that, well, then that is the majority of the battle right there. The rest of the Christian life is as simple as just renewing your mind to what you've already had experienced in your spirit man. In the spirit man, the old is gone, the new has come, you are a brand new person, and in the Spirit you have the same potential, the same power, the same wisdom, the same mind that is in Christ. All of these things are already in you, and all you got to do is just renew your mind to it. It's that simple. It's not necessarily easy. The hardest thing you will ever do is get out of where you are just controlled by your carnal senses, what you can see, taste, hear, smell, and feel, and you start going by what the Word of God says. Because this change didn't take place in the physical, mental, emotional realm. It took place in the spirit realm. You can't see into the spirit. 
You can't feel the Spirit. The only way to successfully contact the Spirit of God, now you can contact the demonic spirit realm through multiple ways, but the only way to contact the Spirit of God, the godly realm, is to go through the Word of God. Jesus said in John 6, 63, it's the Spirit that quickens, the flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So God's Word is spirit. It is a perfect representation of spiritual things. Over in James chapter 1, it says, whoever looks into this perfect law of liberty is like a person that beholds their natural face in a glass. This Word of God is a spiritual mirror. And if you want to see who you are in Christ, whether you still have an old nature, whether you have a new nature, what's going on, you can't just go by how you feel. You have to go by what the mirror says. And so you go to the Word of God. And I've been sharing these verses now for nearly two weeks showing you that your old sinful nature, what the Bible calls the old man, is dead. And it's not coming back to life. It's not resurrected. It's dead. It's gone. He's taken it out of the way. In Colossians chapter 2, it says he took the law out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And so now the law doesn't have, this old nature doesn't have any control, any, res, any dominance over you if you know the truth. The truth will make you free. But if you don't know the truth, you'll still be in bondage because that's the way that you were taught. That's the way it was under the old sinful nature. It taught you that you had no power to do good. All you could do was bad. And the sinful nature programmed your mind now you've got to receive the fact that you are a brand new person, that you aren't married to two different natures. You don't have the nature of the devil and the nature of God in you at the same time. You have one nature if you're born again. Now, if you aren't born again, you only have one nature too, but that is the nature of the devil, the nature of wrath, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 3, even as others. You have a sinful nature on the inside of you. But if you make Jesus your Lord and receive salvation, he, it's not just a mental change. It's not just changing from, you know, uh, Muslim uh, principles and doctrine to Christian doctrine. It's not just a mental thing, a doctrinal deal. It's a heart change. You become a new person on the inside. The old passes away and all things become new. And to the degree that you understand that and believe it, you will start experiencing the new life that this new nature brings. But it's all dependent upon you knowing some things. So man, these first four verses of Romans chapter 7 is saying that in the same way you couldn't have two husbands without being an adulterer, you can't have two natures without being in spiritual adultery. You need to recognize that your old nature is gone and that you have received a new nature from God and it's now got, you've got potential. You are a totally brand new person. Would to God that we could understand that. The reason most people don't get this is because they just don't think in the spiritual realm. You can't see into the spiritual realm. You can't feel the spiritual realm. Some people might disagree with that, but I could explain that if I had more time. But you can't see or feel the spiritual realm, you have to accept it through the revelation that God's Word gives. And very few people are willing to operate in faith. Most people want to go just by feeling. They want to go just by what they can see and perceive with their little peanut brain. And it's hard for them to operate in faith. But if you'd look at the Word of God, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And you can understand that you are a completely brand new person in your spirit. And now you can do anything that Jesus could do. Jesus said, if you believe on me, the works that I do shall you do also, and even greater works than these. This is the power that you have in your born-again spirit, but it has to get through your way of thinking out into your physical body. And so you need to get your mind and your body, your actions lined up with what you already have in your spirit. And man, if you could understand this, it would transform your life. I'm going to continue this on my program tomorrow. Let me mention again that I've got this 55-page booklet that I wrote that's just a brief introduction of this teaching entitled, The Old Man...